So before we get into this video guys, I did want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor Audible, which is a perfect integration for this channel because I actually have been using Audible for a very long time to listen to audiobooks. And one of my main strategies to prepare for interviews was actually to listen to medical related audiobooks on my way to school every day. So some really good ones to listen to are anything by Atul Gawande, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have already uh, listened to if you already have Audible. Uh, Paul Clathney has a really good uh, book that came out a few years ago, really tragic kind of story. And a lot of these books give you some great talking points for when you're sitting down in your interviews and they go over medical ideas along with a lot of the people on the panel have also read these similar books. So even in the ads, Med Bros have got you covered on how to nail those medical school interviews. So if you sign up now, you can get your first audiobook for free along with two Audible originals for 30 days. So you can already get in your pre-med reads right now if you sign up. So go on over to audible.com slash medbros or text medbros to 500-500 to get started. And once you're done preparing for those medical school interviews, you can check out a range of audiobooks that they have, especially their Audible Originals, which are these exclusive audiobooks that they have only at Audible. So if you guys don't have Audible yet, make sure you guys go to audible.com slash medbros or text medbros to 500-500 to get started. And with that, let's get right into this video where we complain about being a medical student. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about something a little juicy. And mm. that is complaints that medical students have about none other than medical school. <laughs> <laughs> and the first one would be obviously mandatory class. You're not going to hear more complaints about anything other than is that thing mandatory. Um, there are some things that definitely medical students love going to and again a lot of this video is just going to be generalized what uh, we hear overall. I'm sure there's a couple of five or six people that love going to class per oh, yeah. medical student class. But for the majority of the time when something's mandatory and especially when it's something like a guest lecture, mandatory, you have to go just because it's a guest lecture. You're going to hear a lot of medical students complaining about that one. And I think also one thing to note is that it's not necessarily that we hate lectures or that we think the stuff is annoying or anything. It's just more so that we don't have time. As medical students, your schedule is literally like packed to the brim. So if you just get told something's mandatory when it's not useful to you, it, it definitely can get annoying because well, there goes your gym time, or there goes the like one little window that you have to do something, or now you have to swap something else out. So it's not really like because you're annoyed with the person, it's nothing personal. It's just more like, damn, I just lost out on some time that I was going to use for something else. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's like more for the first two years <laughs> yeah. when you're, you have like classes. In third year, you're at the hospital and you're usually following a similar schedule to like what the residents are doing mm -hmm. and a complaint about that is that like if you're a resident or an intern generally right you do your stuff and then you come home mm -hmm. like as a medical student you yeah. have to follow the schedule and then on top of that you have other medical school stuff to yeah. do like sure. the step studying and all that stuff so um it it's a like different type of mandatory uh stuff that sucks down the road and then I guess that can lead into another one that when you're done, another thing that kind of annoys me, but I mean, I mean, I understand how it's necessary sometimes, but homework in med school. Thing is, a lot of the times, homeworks end up just being like something you gotta type up real fast or something you gotta like just quickly click through versus you already have to study for an exam. And that's mainly where all of your focus goes. So when you have homework and deadlines, that can sometimes just get annoying and I know People have complained around it so much around me that we actually got homework canceled. To add on to that, very similar to homework, required reading. Exactly, right? yeah, it's similar like, to homework. Yeah. yeah, it's like I got my textbook, I'm ready to go through it, and I look in my email, please buy this book from Amazon mm -hmm. and read through this. And while you're at it, this is optional reading, but we're going to still pimp you on it. So right. please, uh, even though it's optional, <laughs> please buy this and read the entire thing as well. Right. And then at the very end, you can, uh, you know, your high yield book with step study, you can look at that afterwards. Yeah. But right now, please read the principles of <laughs> neoplasia as written by some random old dude. Yeah, Who was a benefactor for the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so this one I'm passionate about. I've been passionate about for years, ever since I was a little tiny tot. The kid who goes, I got a question. After the professor goes, you got any questions? <sighs> Last questions. And then he goes on and asks like five different things. That kid is not welcome. 
no, I shouldn't say that. But. <laughs> I mean, it's okay, like, at the very end of class, he's like, do you have any questions? And the, the student raises their hand. But then after they get the answer, they follow it up with another question. Right, follow right. it up with another. Right. And you're just sitting there like, but why, how did we get to atomic theory? Right, no, and on top of that, a lot of people might, at this point, be like, like when he said, oh, you paid for medicine, you can ask what he wants, whatever. You can do it up. But, but, the question would be great if it's relevant to what we're studying, if it's, you know, expanding on what we learned. It is 99% of the time a question that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, and it's totally just an expansion of at least five or ten minutes of our time. Or it's usually just an opportunity to show that you read the assigned reading. Yeah. Every person out of this individual in their class, I mean, by the time the professor's even done saying, is there any more questions, this guy's hand is up, it's either <laughs> beaming, he's looking up super Those wide, eyes are green. They're They're beaming. Why? Like, <laughs> no that's orientation day. That's the one. Yeah, you know. His, hands, my his hands are. His <laughs> arms are gonna be a little buff from raising them every single <laughs> time. No, but again, I want to reiterate that. Like most of the time, it's fine. It's just like that. That one kid. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Exactly. And going over time with the questions also is related to there's professors on their own time just going over five to ten minutes when you gotta get out of there. Because in the first place, if it's mandatory class, you're not even listening to what they're saying majority of the time. And then on top of that, if they're gonna go five or ten extra minutes while that's like your car drive home, that's... I don't know though, I don't mind five or ten minutes. I think my problem comes when it becomes 20 or 30 minutes. Oh dang, yeah. Like that five or ten, yeah, happened. five or ten, honestly, I'm a patient person. Like, I mean, I'll be a little annoyed, but I'll still respect the professor, sure. You came here, you drove all the way here, fine. 20, 30 minutes is when I start to go, bruh, like you can't keep me trapped in this cage. Like, come on, right. let me out of here. Right. But that's another thing that I know works people. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, uh, I think some people aren't really familiar with in the medical community is that I think there's less of like an obsession with time efficiency. Like mm -hmm. they're just like, we're gonna teach this for an hour 30 or whatever, mm -hmm. we're gonna do this for two hours and it's yeah. like, we'll finish it when it's done. Yeah. Versus in college, people were pretty efficient. Like, all right, yeah. let's get this office hours or whatever in 30 minutes, let's do this in an hour. 100%. We're gonna get you out on time. If we're not done on time, everyone just leaves. Um, it's just kind of this bloated mess in mm -hmm. medical school. They just kind of like, think like, you're here, you moved here and your whole life must be medical school, which it is already. But the thing is, you then you preach about wellness and it's like, person can't be well if you're expecting to fluff up all the stuff that could have been done in an hour, in three hours, you know what I mean? Like, you need to also allow the person to have a little bit more than just medical school. Right, and going off wellness, wellness is a thing that has been going around the medical school community recently at all medical schools where there's that kind of this push to uh, create wellness in medical students by doing activities and other things, but a lot of the times that can be another annoyance because exactly. that's another mandatory wellness meeting for an hour or two mm -hmm. hours where you guys discuss how happy or sad or depressed you are. Yep. One more thing I want to say that is a bit controversial is in response to the going over 30 minutes, I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, these are professors that are taking their time out, they're really uh, esteemed people that, you know, you should respect their time and stuff like that. And that's great, but when, again, like I said, when we're in medical school, we're paying a lot of money we're trying to be doctors. Uh, our goal is to be a doctor. You know, a lot of people I know in the last video where we said, should we skip class? There was a particular, like two really comments of people saying, you should respect their time. Um, that's great and all, but when there's so much to do and you're trying to study and your ultimate goal is saving people's lives, it's either gonna hurt their feelings that I'm saying this, or we can create a better actual wellness for students. Yeah, so a couple, I have a couple of actually extended thoughts yeah. on that. First, why if there's a lecturer, right, a professor, right. why does it hurt their feelings if they're lecturing to a group of 50 students versus they're lecturing to an empty room but all of those 50 are watching them at home? You know what I mean? Right. But Why is that? Like, what's the reason? I don't know. I really can't get it. Well, if they're watching it's an ego thing. It's an ego thing, but I think also that they need to have it set up so that they don't even show up. They can have their thing webcast directly so they don't have to waste their time showing up to the place in the first place. And I will say that usually there are those two or three people that are there to see the professor, and the professor should be happy that there's 50 or there's five really dedicated yeah, people that yeah, are there to hear him. Exactly. It's like or for her. us, yeah, like there's 100 kids and let's say like 20 show up. Right. 
why would that be disrespectful at all? I mean, they're watching it online, and the people who want to watch it, they aren't there. Also, here's why my thing, that? though. It's just also, old school thinking. I think if there's if there's uh, classes that I've had where the uh, lectures are amazing, and it wasn't mandatory, and guess what? Most people showed up, including me, and I don't like class. That's true, too. So, yeah. maybe it kind of shows that you need to change your lecturing style and optimize it better for students because maybe people are not getting stuff out of your class as much as you think they are. Yep. That could also be a sign and I do think that while it sounds privileged, we are paying money for mm -hmm. these people, but for our medical school education. Additionally, why would you not want to create a better learning environment for mm -hmm. your students? So it's not really a jab or anything personal, it's more so just like let's work on making better teaching uh, environments because there are examples out there where people do show up when it's not mandatory and I've seen it and it happens. So. 100% and in the end the fact of the matter is it's just most of the time it's a bad lecture. Yeah. Um, the people I went in Berkeley there was one one class that I enjoy going to lecture to and it was a really amazing professor and I didn't want to miss a single one of his classes and it just goes to show you like it's such a huge difference between a good professor and somebody that just is there with a powerpoint presentation yeah yeah and just and to add to notes. that when people say you paid for your education so you should show up to class it's like when i have a meal and i paid for it why not eat it all it's like just because you paid for it doesn't mean you should stuff your face with like 10 right. portions. Oh, that's a really good analogy. Yeah. It's like, just because you paid for it, that's not the best thing to Even do. Even better analogy, you can save it for later, which you can watch on lecture online, so you don't yeah. have to waste your food. You, you can, can just eat it later. Just be resourful, be Yeah, look at these analogy clever. boys. And then, I would say this is the number one thing you'll hear med students complain about is the quiz or test having completely different material on it than you studied, than your lecturer taught, that's going to be like all oh, you hear all day long because that's just what our life is. It's just, oh my god, I hope it's what I like, what I studied on the test and when it's not, people get frustrated because that's all you're going to hear about. Yeah, it's interesting because in college that happened sometimes, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen like that often. Yeah. So when it did happen, like remember our math final? Yeah. Um, it was completely different and everyone was just like, bewildered the entire yeah, day. It was it's like, like what weird. is going on here? It's not, that's not normal. Yeah. But we kind of just accepted it in medical school. Yeah. Like the test half the time is literally completely different. Yeah. I think that's why you talk about it more because it's like it's going to happen this time. Like mm -hmm. it happened last time. Like it's going to happen again. Right. Yeah. Alright guys, that'll do it for this video. I hope we got you guys in a little bit of tea sipping mode. <laughs> this is, this is not tea at all. Tea, <laughs> tea at all. time! Hope you guys enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe, follow Core Beauty if you already don't, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Take care now. Take care now. <laughs>